So we're taking it up again from our scripture, Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. We've been looking at how Jesus said, the Son of Man can do nothing except what he sees and hears the Father doing and saying. And I mean, I'm talking about um, just living, but if there's a heartbeat to the life of the prophet intercessor, there, this is, is that we are moved and led by the Holy Spirit and uh, we hear the Father and we move with his leading in a place of intercession. There's just no way you can move in the wisdom and counsel of God. You can't think it up, for goodness sake. And we've seen how intuitively Jesus is being led to know their thoughts. And we'll see more in that vein. The, the verse 8, 14 Romans says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Some people uh, point out that the word sons of God is huios. It's talking about mature sons of God, the Greek word huios. Now, I try not to keep dividing the body of Christ and chucking out people, you know. If you're not mature, we'll chuck you out. If you're not the bride, we'll chuck you out. I'm just trying to say, come in to the fullness of God, and we, we mustn't keep chucking people out with our theology. But, you know, having said that, we're pressing on with the apostle. I'm pressing on as though I hadn't attained I'm pressing on that I might attain what God has for me and, and lay hold of eternal life. I was thinking that in no way says that Paul was living, oh, will I make it? Will I not make it? That is not the, the thought behind that. It's not the heartbeat of his word, uh, oh, I press on that I might lay hold of eternal life. He, he's just saying that's how it is. There's an, such an intensity to to pressing in. Why, you know, like Jesus spent all night in prayer seeking the Father, living to hear the whisper of God. You know, you could say they didn't need to do that, but it, it's just something understood when you think of the origin of the fall of man. That's why I included it. In the beginning, God created, and it was all very good. We're not in a, a try and patch that up to try and regain what was lost in the fall of mankind. There's no patching that up. And therefore, we're walking where we're walking with the Son of God. Amen, amen. Anyway, Jesus did nothing but that he first heard or saw the Father's leading given him by the Holy Spirit. If we really believed the Bible, then we would believe that. We would also believe when the Bible says we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. We would see ourselves differently and follow the way of sacrifice, denying ourselves, taking up a cross, dependent upon the Holy Spirit more and more. It's where, it's where that we honor God, but it's also where we will see great and wondrous things in every area of life. Many preachers have had to admit that they expect those who hear them to do what they say and not necessarily what they do. It's a bit sad, but at least it's honest. We preach a good message, but we, we're not living it. We say we're seated with Christ. We say this, we say that, and we should teach the truth of who we are in Christ. But there's some good honesty needed. Uh, Je Jesus challenged 
us with this observation in Matthew 15, 8. These people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Can you see that lip service alone is seeking to live an outward obedience whilst keeping the heart wrapped up in self-seeking? No cross, no sacrifice, just outward obedience to please the onlooker. And, and God is exposing that across the planet. And, and various religious institutions are, are being exposed and uncovered. And people are losing heart, unfortunately, in the good almighty God and Jesus Christ. But they were leaning on an institution, not on the truth of God's person and the truth of his word. They were leaning on an institution. God is exposing that. So that lip service is no longer okay. You can't just turn up once a week and then live the rest of your life for self. It doesn't work. It's very depressing. And... Uh, you know, why do it? Why live in a puddle when there's an ocean to live in? Uh, yeah. I love the revelation of the reality that is seen in this next verse. 1 Peter one eleven. The prophets of old, it says of them, they were searching out what manner of time the spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. The Spirit of Christ was in the Old Testament prophets, bearing witness within them. They were searching out, what does this mean? But they prophesied, they spoke, and they spoke of the sufferings of Jesus and the glory that would follow that suffering. And, and we haven't fully glimpsed the glories which will, shall be unfolded when Jesus is revealed and our eyes are completely open. We will be astounded throughout eternity by the majesty, the magnificence of God. Um, but they had that spirit within them. And there's a point I use that and love that is because the Spirit of Christ was in the prophets of the Old Testament. And it was he, the Spirit of Christ, who was leading them and that spoke forth the word of God within them. Such a reality of the Spirit of Christ within. And it is this reality that is to lead the sons and daughters of God today. A reality, the Christ is speaking forth, leading, whispering, learning to hear and be led by the Holy Spirit. These are the mature sons and daughters of God. Now let's see something amazing about this leading, the leading of the Holy Spirit within us. In John 11, 33, Therefore Jesus saw her weeping. This is the account of Lazarus who had died, Mary and Martha, he saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her were weeping. And Jesus groaned in the spirit and was troubled. I'll carry on. I'll read the other verse. Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. You know the story? He's going to call for Lazarus. Come forth. He'd been dead four days, the whole story. But the point I'm making, this was not an emotional stirring alone. Jesus was moved by compassion to see them weeping. But his spirit was being moved within. His spirit was moved by the Holy Spirit. Something of the Father's leading is about to take place. Jesus feels that. See, we've got to take on board another way of hearing and moving with Jesus. And as our concluding verse will show later, mm -hmm, something of the Father is about to be revealed there. But our concluding verse, which we will come to, 
will reveal something. These miracles were not the invention of man. Peter's famous statement, a lot of people know this, silver and gold I do not have. It was not some construed idea within Peter. It was the moving of the Holy Spirit. Again, I'll say, something of the Father's leading is going on. And Peter says, silver and gold, Acts 3, 6, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. How do you get to that place where you're suddenly saying something like that and a miracle occurs? Go back to the foundations. Jesus did only those things which he saw and heard the Father. Peter is, you could say, is it seeing and hearing? He knew this was the Spirit of God. He had words in his mouth that he didn't invent. Silver and gold, I do not have. A lot of preachers will know that kind of, wow. <laughs> I've heard one preacher say, if, if only my mum could have heard what I just said. <laughs> She'd have been impressed because it was the wisdom of God. It wasn't his wisdom, you understand. The stirring of the Holy Spirit moves the waters of miracles. And I love this following verse that we should hold up before us, looking to the Holy Spirit to make it alive to us so that we might receive any miracle that we need. The Holy Spirit must move, but I came across this verse and it, it jumped out. Acts 3.16 says this, there had just been a miracle and it, the apostle was defending, you know, they said like, how come he's healed? And the apostle said, his name, talking of Jesus, and through faith in his name, this man stands here strong whom you see and know. They knew the man had been lame from his birth. Now they're seeing him healed. And Jesus says it is his name, Jesus' name, and through faith in his name. And this is the bit that jumped out to me. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Did you hear that last bit? The faith which comes through him has given him this complete healing. And I've been, you know, using that as wisdom in prayer. Yes, the name of Jesus. Faith in his name. But the faith which is streaming through him into my being is what, why I stand here completely healed now I, I give that verse to you to say look again to the Lord and, and realize that the Holy Spirit can take those words of that verse Acts 3 I forgot what it was shall I tell you again Acts 3 16 similar to John 3 16 Read that verse as well. Allow and open your heart to the Holy Spirit in the verse. The person in the verse. And, and uh, open your heart to the person in that verse. The faith which comes through him might make you whole. And, and many people have been healed just by some sort of whisper like that. They hear a verse, but the Spirit of God gives it ignition and they are healed by one word, one verse one sentence from the mouth of God, amazing yet again God has set up another meeting place for his apostle and servant this is another verse we're coming to to meet with the Holy Spirit's leading and demonstrate the kingdom of God. And this is the verse. So we're off again. Another thing happens. It happened that the father of Publios lay sick of fever and dysentery. And Paul went into him and prayed, laid his hands on him, and healed him. Acts 28 8. What's that story? Well, there's a story behind it. Paul is on a mission. 
He turns up in a strange town. Nobody knows him. Their hospital. But he hears that the father, a grandfather, whatever, is sick, goes in and heals him. He didn't invent that. God had set up a meeting for his servant to demonstrate the kingdom of God. There are countless other miracles in the New Testament done by the hands of many who had the privilege of being caught up in the moving of the Holy Spirit, seeing not only miracles, but seeing the beauty of God, the revelations of the heart of God. And our final verse leaves us with a reminder that I wish to bring. And it's a strange verse, 2 Timothy 4.20. Not really strange, but this is the Apostle Paul again. He's just, he's kind of saluting them in the conclusion of this letter. He says, Erastus stayed in Corinth. But this is the bit. But Trophimos, Trophimos, I have left in Miletus sick. So the Apostle Paul who has seen, I think I've written it, here Paul, who had seen amazing miracles and visions. He had seen Jesus in his glorified state. He had seen angels and heard the voice of God and much more. But here he leaves a fellow worker sick and hopefully to recover in God's mercy and grace. Why no supernatural moving, we might ask Paul. His reply might be, did I not say that within myself there is no good thing? I taught you again and again that the way of God is a life laid down in surrender to his leading. The way of the cross is the way of the master. Christ in us is the only source of every good thing including those beautiful aspirations and hopes we hold within our heart. Christ is the source. Never does such beautiful hope and aspiration stem from within this dust of man. With all, that's where it concludes, with all I've said, and I hope you'll take that as a chapter of teaching to, as foundation. But I got that thought uh, a couple of weeks ago and theme that the source, I've had some, some inspiration of such beauty and lofty, grand beauty. I've seen, I remember being in Sweden and I saw these young ladies and young guys and the Spirit of God was on me. I thought, princes and princesses before Almighty God. That's who God sees. And, and uh, that was a wonderful place. But I didn't think such noble themes. That wasn't something in me. But I've got to taste again and again such beautiful things that lift us and can lift you to a place of holding before you in the horizon such beauty, such honor, such dignity, such, such wonderfulness. The, the, the verse that says, listen, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. See, righteousness held up on the horizon will lift a nation and give it hope. And the nations of this world need, need that. But righteousness alone will lift a nation. We must turn to the ways of God. So a lot there. I don't know how much, but it's good stuff. It might have been better in a book. Buy the book, read the book. But this way I've read you the book or a chapter out of it. God bless you as you are led by the Holy Spirit. And remember what Jesus, he groaned in his spirit. And the Father, the Spirit within him, wanted to birth a miracle. And Lazarus was raised from the dead. Learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. Seek to hear and be moved by the Holy Spirit. It's got to be an adjustment 
to be that kind of people. Jesus spent hours and hours alone with the Father, and he needn't have done. He could have somehow just brought all his deity back and, and sat with the Father and, and just sung. But he, as a man, was desperate to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. So he had to know the heart of the Father. Amen.